Welcome to Silicon Valley Innovation Center. Here at SBIC, we promote discussion on technology and business innovation through our executive immersion programs and our online events, just like this one that we have today. My name is Rahim Rahimtula. I'm an SBIC brand ambassador. Today, I'm talking to Kunal Contractor about the role of conversational AI in digital transformation. Don't forget, if you, have a com if you have a question for Canal, I should say, you can send that to us in real time. Just do that through the comments section of whichever platform you're listening to us through. So our, our guest today, um, let me tell you a little bit more about him. Canal Contractor, he's global director at Avamo, which is a deep learning software company, which specializes in conversational AI for enterprise. And Canal joins us now, I hope. Canal, are you? Yes, thanks Raheem, how are you? Yeah, thank you, Kunal. I'm very, very well. You're coming to us from Silicon Valley, I believe. I am indeed. Very good. Um, and I want to ask you, so AI, chatbots, uh, that is a concept I think we're all somewhat familiar with um, at this point. Um, but looking at Avamo's website, reading about the company, I feel like what you do is perhaps a little bit different, or at least you describe it in slightly different terms, um, because you call it AI-driven conversational computing. I see that phrase used uh, quite a bit uh, in relation to Avamo. Um, so perhaps just to start, unpack that for us a little bit. Tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great, uh, great question. So things like chatbots, as uh, you know, Satya Nadella said back in 2016, um, as the CEO of Microsoft, are going to fundamentally revolutionize how computing is experienced by everybody. But you know, chatbots are great to help fill out forms or <clears throat> in a way perform what we call the first generation of conversational interfaces. Things such as, what is my account on speech bank or play Taylor Swift on my Amazon Echo? But to truly deliver what we would call the promise of conversational AI, you know, fundamentally new technology had to be built to perform what we would then call multi-turn conversations and execute judgment intensive tasks, just like humans would. So. What we do in a way is deliver a second generation of conversational AI that is able to execute those uh, rich multi-turn dynamic conversationals. So it's capable of actually handling a lot of queries in aspects like customer service, generating quotes and insurance, answering claims for inquiries within healthcare. So, you know, it's a pretty rapidly evolving technology. Um, and it does promise to change the way that we work and how businesses would really interact with their customers or their employees and their stakeholders. So in our world, there's about five different classes, actually, of conversational agents, um, from those that are slightly more simple to slightly more complex. And they go from things like chatbots, as you mentioned, which are quite narrowly focused and they execute like a simple workflow using natural language. Then you would have a virtual personal assistant which is good for kind of like first, second, third service, and usually available in Zoom devices like Facebook Messenger. Uh, then a virtual customer assistant. So it's kind of similar, and they act on behalf of the, the enterprise to really stimulate a conversation that can deliver information um, and take care of actions on behalf of that customer. Uh, the employee assistant, which is very similar in simplifying engagements within the organize, uh, organization. And finally, things like Avamo, which is more of a full stack platform where we do offer like the full tooling, machine learning, data science automation and integrations into other enterprise systems. And that's really how we see one of the biggest differences between conversational computing and things like chatbots. So you all, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play the role here, Canal, uh, of a, say, a, a slightly skeptic, skeptical sort of business executive. I mean, that's what we do here at SBIC. We like to connect executives and legacy companies with startups, with innovative technology companies because we want them to, you know, to connect and, and to jumpstart innovation at their at their own companies. So I might be looking at Avamo and I might think, well, this sounds pretty great. I mean, are you you're basically saying to me, I can save money, I can and by sort of having less uh, human customer support, I could use those human customer customer support agents in more creative roles and get more out of them and help them to achieve their potential. Um, and yet I can still serve my customers, answer their queries just as well as I, as I always could. I mean, that sounds, sounds fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. So, you know, um, as a part of that, when users are speaking to our bots, like we actually found with one of our insurance companies, um, they prefer speaking to a bot because unlike sometimes human sales guys, they don't lie. 
So, you know, in this age of fake news, that kind of must count for something, right? But also bots don't judge you. Like I could bet that you've probably Googled something before that you'd probably never dream of asking another human being. Because again, Google's not going to judge you. Mm. So for example, we have one of the, even though the bots are and can in some ways replace the activities of human beings, they very much also work in a way to supplement the activities of those humans. So we're working right now with one of the country's top wealth management divisions of one of the country's largest banks, and they use our bots for their financial advisors. So even though their experienced agents are, you know, in most 99% certain of providing a response or an answer to one of their customers, they still use our bots just to make sure on the off chance they get that 1% incorrect. But however, mm-hmm. they ask that question to a colleague that's kind of embarrassing for them. Like, you know, if somebody has been doing this job for 13 to 15 or 20 years, can't ask somebody who's been there for three years who probably remembers more of the training, hey, was the uh, tax-free rate up to 5,500 or was it 6,000? Um, because then they're just going to look a little bit silly. But what they're able to do now is using our bots, all of their agents, regardless of experience, they're able to reduce the amount of time um, they're on the phone with the customer by over 50%. And they've reduced the error rate on new applications by 72%. So that's really driving a substantial difference within the organization, impacting that customer experience and using the bots to supplement their existing workforce without actually necessarily replacing them. That all sounds very good indeed. Um, but what if, I mean, I, I have a workforce and I, I trust them and I know that they're capable and I know that they know all about my business. But the idea, I just... Not, I'm not all perhaps with the idea of hanging over to, to an AI platform to, to speak to my customers. I mean, wouldn't customers, I mean, they must at some sense prefer to speak to, to real people. They want people to pick up the phone uh, at some point, don't they? Uh, some of them do and some of them don't. So that kind of ties back into that insurance example where people actually prefer to speak to a bot because the humans wouldn't necessarily lie to them. Um, or I won't name names, but if you think of some of the the country's largest um, cable providers, uh, you know, you still go through some of their automated systems and spend about 10 minutes doing that, then you get through to a human being, and they ask you all of these questions all over again. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in today's world as well, where people seek instant gratification, bots are able to answer users, you know, their complex questions pretty much immediately, instead of having to wait for ages to get an agent on the phone. And even when you're on the line with an agent, some of them you know, have about 50% of those calls as dead time while the agent's looking up information. What robots are actually able to do is predict what the user's going to say next in a conversation using our um, knowledge that we've learned from the deep machine learning, the kind of data science and the knowledge graphs. So it's already pre-processing and calling the APIs and performing the transactions before the user even asks the question. So when they do, the user has an immediate response instead of even having to wait for about four hundredths of a second for the bot to then run those API integrations. Um, We're actually doing something similar for one of the world's largest appliance manufacturers right now. So we can actually even provide the user with information that's relevant to them before they even ask that question. And how do I know though that the the bot, the AI platform is giving the right answers? How does it work in terms of oversight on these bots and What's the process for them when, you know, we change something in our company? Um, how do we communicate that to the boss? And, and how do we know that it's always really giving the answers to the people that they, that they actually want? Sure, absolutely. So that comes through, you know, extensive levels of um, analytics and business intelligence. But effectively using our data science automation, we're able to train using Let's just pick a simple, let's say, service desk or customer support type example, as you're kind of alluding to. So we're able to use previously asked and answered questions that the company has gone through. So they know these are all the questions people are going to ask us. And these are all the different ways they're asking us these questions. And here's how we have successfully responded to those questions, which especially ties in how the users have then rated that piece of customer experience or given a high NPS score. So for a lot of companies, you know, they're really driven by maintaining and improving their NPS and providing what I at least like to call customer delight. So mm-hmm. we would use their existing data sets to train the bot. So the bot immediately, once it goes live, knows what intents people are looking for when they ask those questions and exactly how to answer that question. But you know, we do know we're not going to solve world hunger in one fell swoop. 
our bots can and always will escalate to a human being if needed, uh, to a live agent needed through the phone or a live chat, um, or if the user just wants to do and wants to speak to a live human being. You know, our goal is not to force everybody to always use the bot. The goal is to drive customer experience and help the organization reduce cost at the same time. So if there are still some users who have, want to have a conversation on the phone, that is perfectly acceptable. Uh, and actually one of our latest products is what we call conversational IVR, where we're replacing some of those large complex uh, tree-based IVR systems. So users can actually have a phone-based conversation with the bot, including things like what we call human prosody and human discourse, which is the ability for the bot to add in things like how we are having a conversation, such as the relevant pauses, a laugh, a giggle, um, literally even saying um while it's delivering a response instead of it just sounding like a full automated system. So we are trying to address that aspect as well. It sounds like it's really um, very, very sophisticated indeed. I mean, you wonder, is this going towards a sort of place where one day we're not actually going to know if we're talking to a bot or a human? Yeah, absolutely. Sometimes, so we actually get that sometimes right now, especially in the text and some of our voice customers, where um, customers may not realize if they are speaking to a, to a bot or a human. And in a lot of cases, depending on the client and why the, their customers are coming in or why their employees are, are working with them or with the bot, in a way, you know, excuse my language, but quite frankly, they don't really care as long as they can get their issue resolved as soon as possible. Sure. Um, there are some of our, you know, some cases when we work with certain healthcare providers um, or a, an online therapy site, actually, where, you know, for certain situations, you do want to speak to a certified therapist, but the bot's still there to help collect a bunch of information. So it saves human valuable resources, especially in, you know, people like therapists or medical professionals. So the bot can handle, let's say, even if it's up to 60% of collecting information. So that allows the, these you know, humans to spend more time actually providing better uh, health care to patients instead of wasting time collecting information that could be automated. Absolutely. And I want to ask you, Kanal, what about um, digital transformation in all of this in, in, inside corporations? Um, when they're, you know, they're trying to change their business processes and make use of data um, better use of technology, but to, to make the, the whole organization itself more efficient and to make it more, uh, you know, give it give it more empower it really to to be able to innovate uh, more more actively. And and I'm thinking here how particularly I know that you were um, at SVIC fairly recently and you you talked to um, an oil and gas uh, major company who came in and, and joined us for an executive immersion program and. In that presentation that you gave to them, you didn't talk so much about um, using Avamo to talk to customers, but more about how using AI can within a business can really trans transform how the business is is run. Um, and so it sounds like this is you know this is about is it tell me well this is for you to tell me is it about using AI to sort of see where in, how in, how processes work, being able to collect data on those business processes, how employees interact with them and then using that to, to analyze that information and, and being able to iterate on it to, to. Yeah, absolutely. It's a um, great memory from that, uh, that presentation. So, you know, this is as part of that digital transformation. It's also in a way what um, we in a number of our clients, um, especially are calling, uh, you know, uh, what's known as industry 4.0. So that's kind of like the name given to the current trend of, automation and, and data exchange includes things like cyber physical systems, IOT, cloud computing, and especially what we're doing as cognitive computing. But as we're talking about addressing, you know, the internal employee experience, um, being a fellow Brit, I'm sure you'll appreciate the quote from Richard Branson, the founder and CEO of the Virgin Group. He said, if you look after your staff, they'll look after your customers. It's that simple. So, you know, the core of a great customer experience is a great employee experience. Yet a lot of organizations are failing at actually offering a proactive and innovative service that can really help with employee productivity. And there are a huge number of factors that shape that employee experience, including the design and kind of collaboration capabilities within their work environments, the tools and platforms they use to accomplish their work, but also that overall AT ecosystem that enables a productive workforce. Um, so we're working with one of the largest um, tech companies, actually quite a few of the largest tech companies here in Silicon Valley, uh, 
the one of the world's largest airline manufacturers, um, one of the world's largest FMCGs, global electronics company, and some of the world's top healthcare organizations, especially here in the US, uh, some of them actually being Fortune 10 companies, all of them are working with us for, you know, for a simple IT help desk bot. Uh, and this is really powerful in terms of investing in that level of an employee self-service. So when people come in, and especially if we look at something so simple like a password reset, one of our customers gets 15,000 password reset tickets coming in every single month. And it takes the employee around 20 minutes to get their password reset. So if you think about that and do the math as to how much time and money and frustration goes into that lost productivity, and we're able to actually resolve that and reset the password in under 20, sorry, in under 27 seconds, um, that's driving a major impact to the organization. Uh, obviously, yeah, I think it's a huge time and productivity savings to be made there. So, I mean, Canal, is this a technology for any company, any industry? Do you guys target yourselves to some particular sectors? Uh, we do. We've got a, a particular focus on a number of um, kind of core industries that range from banking, financial services, uh, insurance, healthcare, telco, and retail. But we do have a number of other customers in a number of other industries that range from FMCGs, uh, manufacturing, supply chain, logistics, etc. As well. So um, potentially there are there are applications of this in across different businesses. It's not that a particular type of business is particularly well suited to sort of the way that AI works and AI is able to deliver solutions, you know, in particular domains. Uh, it is absolutely applicable to practically every organization of any size in any industry. We tend to focus on slightly larger enterprises and not as much the, the kind of smaller companies. Um, but if you recall, you know, quite a few years ago, we were in the world of companies had to adopt a digital first strategy. If you didn't have a website, no one's really going to do business with you. Then we moved into a mobile first strategy. If you didn't really have a solid mobile app, you weren't going to get much done. Today, we're in the world of an AI first strategy. And that's becoming ever so important with analyst houses like Gartner themselves predicting that by 2020, which is literally just around the corner, that nearly 80% of interactions people would have with a brand is going to be automated. So, you know, with that in mind, it doesn't matter how big or how small your organization is. I'm working um, through some of our other uh, partners with some uh, startup organizations that are building apps to, you know, help pregnant women um, being able to ask and answer questions to reduce the amount of time that they have to go in and see a physician. So this is a very small startup company. They're just still raising this um, seed money. But I'm working with them because that's a, a wonderful use case to, mm -hmm. as I mentioned earlier, some of the Fortune 10 companies. So it really does. Have yeah, that's, that's very interesting, Kanal. It definitely sounds like AI really does have a very, very bright future. And I'm glad that you mentioned that, the 2020 number, because we're almost running out of time here today, unfortunately. Um, and so I want to ask you as a sort of last question, a last thought here, um, about something that your CEO and co-founder of Avamo said, actually, uh, earlier this year, Ram Menon, is that right? No, I've got the name right, have I? Yes. So he was at the World Mobile Congress, um, and he said that conversational AI um, is really still at day one, um, and it's only actually going to get more sophisticated. Um, and so I'm wondering, with that in mind, if you're a company now who's looking at this technology and you're thinking that, what do you do? I mean, do you get, you should, I mean, I, I presume you want to say that you should get on board with it now and you don't need to wait until it becomes more mature. So just tell me, sum it up for me. What is for you the key driving reason that any enterprise needs now to get on board with conversational AI and, and not wait around? Um, it's a great question. And yes, you know, within the world of AI, um, it is still very early days. I mean, you know, just even five years ago, the prospect of the kind of things we're able to do now seemed far-fetched, futuristic and stuff you might have just seen in movies. So we're not also, you know, nowhere near the kind of levels of Skynet just yet. I mean, they are predicting that bots will be able to perform full surgeries probably in about 50 or so years from now. So we're still... Um, quite some time away, even though bots are still helping with some elements of, you know, things like, um, like surgery. But 
know, one of the, those core reasons to specifically answer your question, Raheem, is, you know, conversational computing is a very rapidly evolving technology, and it does promise to change the way that we work, you know, and how a lot of businesses would interact with their customers, with their employees, with stakeholders, um, and with a massive capability of impacting both the customer experience and reducing costs at the same time. So that one reason is what we call last mile automation. Because if you're able to address the kind of core aspect of a business, to allow it to grow, remain competitive, and not be at the detriment of their customers, and especially as we know from history, any and every early adopter of data technologies always is out of top. Um, whether it's from military aspect or a commercial or a business aspect, that's always been the case. Um, so as a kind of final note, you know, quite simply, that's, that's the biggest reason. Fantastic, yes, well, early adoption, uh, and how you know that is going to lead to good things. So, Canal, I thank you very, very much for joining us today. I think we'll have to end our discussion there. But I'd like to, yeah, thank you very much for, for taking the time to be with us. Not this a problem, and thank you very much for uh, the opportunity. It's been a pleasure. Uh, thank you to our listeners as well out there for tuning in. Um, I want to say, if you've enjoyed my interview with Kunal, don't forget to join us on Thursday, this Thursday, September 13th. We're going to be hosting a webinar on AI and the future of the workplace. So I think my conversation with Kunal has set us up very well for that. And we're going to go into more detail. We're going to have a, a panel of, of three excellent speakers. Um, so please don't miss that and visit our website, siliconvalley.center, for more details and to register. Um, I do hope you will, you will be able to join us then. Unfortunately, that's where we will have to sign off for today. From me, from my guest, Dave Kuhn, Dr. Bartlett, goodbye.